Are you in the market to buy a home in Northern Virginia and you're a first time home buyer and you're kind of confused uh, where to start the process? Well, this video is going to be for you because I'm going to go over frequently asked questions that I've received over the years from first time home buyers. Boom! Hey everybody, it's David, your favorite realtor. It's another beautiful day right here in Northern Virginia. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel where every week I'm releasing awesome real estate related videos. And if you can hit that subscribe button, that would be great. And let's get this started. First time home buyer frequently asked questions. So a question I get a lot is, where do I start? Well, where do you start? Watching this video is an absolute great, great start. So one of the first things you want to do when you start off the process is really have a need or motivation to actually buy a house. You know, whatever that is for you, it can be different. Maybe you're starting a family or your, your current lease is coming to an end. So that's really the first start is having the motivation and desire. Second step is, is to connect with a rock star real estate agent such as myself, or if you're in a different area, I can refer somebody uh, to you as well. And talk to that real estate agent. You're gonna go over your criteria, your time frame, and uh, all that good stuff. And then if that's 1A, 1B is talk to a local lender. Because you may think, uh, you know, I wanna buy a $400,000 house or a $500,000 house. You know, unfortunately, it's not up to you how much house you can afford, it's up to the lenders. And you want to talk to a rock star local lender who's going to give you an awesome rate, give you prime time customer service, and just make the whole process as easy and smooth as possible. So really that's step number one. Like I said, talk to a rock star uh, realtor such as myself. And 1B is talk to a rock star lender. Next question. What are closing costs and who pays them? Well, closing costs are exactly what, what, what the phrase is. There are fees that you pay at closing, at the closing table. So... These fees, they're gonna consist of a few things and it's gonna come out to about two and a half to 3% of the sales price. So for example, if you buy a $500,000 house, you can expect your closing costs to be anywhere from like 12 to 15,000. Really depends on you know, what location you're buying the house, kind of how high their condo or HOA fees are, what the property taxes are in that area. So closing costs are gonna consist of, you're gonna have prepaid um, real estate taxes, HOA slash and or condo fees. You're gonna have uh, lender fees, um, title search fees, settlement company fees. You may have uh, you know, your pest inspection fee in there. You're gonna have maybe up to six months of uh, homeowner's insurance wrapped up into the closing cost. So that's pretty much where they come up to. Like I said, over the years I've seen, I've always used that number two and a half percent. That's pretty much gonna nail it right there how much you can expect to pay for closing costs. Now the second part to that question is, who pays them? Well, ultimately, it's up to the buyer to pay those closing costs. Now, however, closing costs are a negotiable item that you can negotiate during the negotiation process. Um, so it's really good if you find a house that maybe has been sitting on the market for a long time, and you as the first time home buyer working with a rock star, a realtor such as myself, know that we had the leverage. You know, we can sometimes get the seller to pay some of those closing costs, or best case scenario, they pay all of them. Now, if you get all of the closing costs paid for, that's a huge savings for you, a lot less money out of your pocket, and it's gonna make the whole process of buying a home for the first time a lot easier. Another question I get a lot is, when is the best time to buy a house? So I'm gonna answer this question from a first time home buyer perspective. So I would say first time home buyers, 95, maybe 100% of them, maybe not quite 100, but 95% of them, are renting like they're either renting an apartment or they're renting like a house or a townhouse from you know someone who owns the house so they're gonna have a lease so the best time to buy a house as a first-time home buyer is to actually close in that property the month that your lease ends for example let's say your lease ends August 30th best case scenario is to close let's say August 15th so that way you get a good two weeks you know to leisurely move into your next house and the big biggest benefit to that is you will not have a mortgage payment the month of August. Because when you purchase the house, the next month there's no mortgage payment. So in this scenario, your lease would end, you would have no mortgage payment, no lease payment, and that's a huge savings in your pocket. It makes the whole process a lot easier. You can use that extra money that you saved by having no mortgage or rental payment, you know, to pay for movers or maybe some paint, thing, thing like that. I've also seen the flip side. I've had uh, first time home buyers buy their house four months before the lease end. And guess what? They have both a rental payment and a mortgage payment. 
And that is huge. That is double the payment. And that's a huge burden, especially on a first time home buyer. So definitely try not to make that mistake. And when you work with a realtor like myself, I'm gonna make sure that the timing is as perfect as possible. Next question that I get a lot is, David, how does your commission work? Do I pay you? All right, so good news is about when you buy a house is that you, most cases, you're not paying the commission directly to myself. So how the process works is there's two agents on each transaction, you know, 90% of the time. You have a buyer's agent, like myself in this scenario, who will be representing you, the first time home buyer. In the homes that we go see, you know, the listings, they have a listing agent that represents the seller. Now when the seller hires a listing agent, uh, you know, they, they agree to pay that listing agent a certain, you know, percentage. And then the listing agent splits that percentage with uh, whoever the buyer's agent is. And in this scenario, it would be me. So that's the awesome part. You as a consumer, as a first time home buyer are not directly paying me. It is the seller paying myself and the listing agent. So you're gonna get my services or any realtor out there for that matter of fact, 100% free. So make sure you get yourself a rock star realtor who's worked with a lot of first time home buyers who can make the whole process as easy and smooth as possible and keep you updated every step of the way. Another question I get a lot is David, how long does the home buying process take? So I've seen, I've seen home buying process take as little as 10 days and I've seen them last as long as you know eight months. So I'm just gonna kinda go into average. So let's say you wake up today and I wanna buy a house. My lease is coming to an end and it's time for me to you know, buy a house for the first time. You know, I'm, My job's doing good, I got some money saved up. So usually how it starts is interview an agent such as myself, we set you up with a rock star lender you get pre-approved. Now, depending on where you are financially, you know there may be some more steps to that process. And then we start house shopping. So house shopping, it can take anywhere from a day, maybe 30 days. It really depends what your criteria is, how much inventory is out there. So let's use 30 days for this example. So 30 days to find your house. And then when you get on a contract, you know that's when the seller and buyer have agreed to terms, everything's written, signed off. That process is usually anywhere from 30 to 45 days. So let's go into high end of 45 days, plus you know the 30 days you know to find your house, maybe two you know two weeks, three weeks of getting pre-approved, hiring your agent, all that good stuff. So really, 90 days is a pretty safe number from the time when you really take the first step of interviewing an agent, interviewing um, you know a local lender. So 90 days you should be safe. Like I said, it can be a little bit shorter, it can be a lot longer. It just really depends how long it takes you to find your house. Well, thank you for watching my video. If you got any value out of this, please hit that thumbs up button. And if there's anything in the world I can do for you right here in Northern Virginia, my, my contact information is going to be right in the description. And hope you have an awesome rest of your day.